What is going on you guys? My name is Josh, also known as Harry Tornado, and my full-time job is selling things on eBay and making YouTube videos about it. I went to Goodwill today looking for items to flip on eBay, and I was able to find such an eclectic mix of great items to sell that I knew right when I left the store that I had to come straight home and make a YouTube video about it. Stick around, you won't regret it. Before we jump into this video today, I just want to take a quick second to thank you for clicking on it. If you're a returning viewer, if you've already been a subscriber to my channel for a while now, welcome back. I missed you so much. And if this happens to be the first time you're seeing one of my videos, again, my name is Josh. I go by Harry Tornado here on YouTube and Instagram, and I make videos about reselling and thrifting and making money online and, and making videos and doing all this crazy stuff. So if you find content like this interesting, be sure to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't yet. As I was saying, I did go to Goodwill today looking for things to flip on eBay, and when you do this, it can be really hit or miss. Sometimes I go to two or three Goodwills in a row and don't find anything, and sometimes I just go to one Goodwill and come out with six or seven really profitable items, and that is exactly what happened today. Now, I don't just go to Goodwill to find stuff to flip for a profit. I also shop for personal use. When I find items that I need or want at Goodwill, I have no hesitation about buying them for myself, and today I was able to pick up two of these personal use items. First up, we got this set of disc... First up, we got this set of Rectech disc golf discs. I, I, I don't play disc golf a ton, but I do enjoy it occasionally get out with some buddies of mine and we play this was three dollars and 97 cents and it's a three-piece set it has a driver a mid iron and a putter which is pretty much all you need if you want to just basically get into disc golf for you know at a beginner level so this is this is great for me it comes with a nice little carrying case again three dollars and 97 cents pretty good deal next item for personal use is this men's columbia shirt it's a short sleeve kind of like a blue tee almost the same color as the wall we painted Man, that's pretty similar. Look at there, meant to be. I'm always on the hunt for new button-down shirts, like the ones that have the collars that button down right here. I don't like the ones that kind of flail out. It's just not my style. So this was a cool color. It's a cool material. It feels kind of like a, a cotton linen blend almost, although I don't think Columbia sells linen stuff. It just feels really soft. It's my size. I think it'll look really, really good on me. I would try it on, but I kind of like to wash thrift store stuff um, before I before I put it on. But this was four dollars and seventy five cents, which is a great deal because if I were to buy this brand new, it'd probably be like a thirty thirty five dollars shirt. So definitely uh, definitely happy with this personal use purchase today. So now let's get into the items that I bought to flip for a profit. First item up is this Krupp's Touch Top Coffee Mill. A lot of people are getting into the uh, I don't want to call it a fad of coffee, but people are just getting into higher quality coffee nowadays that you have to grind at home or this roasted a certain way. So I think this item is not going to sit for very long. It's not new. It's gently used. It's Everything's intact. It does work. It's fully functional. This was $3.97 and sold comps on this exact model are about $18 plus shipping. It sells pretty regularly. So I'm pretty comfortable with that amount of profit margin. This is a pretty small item. It's not going to take up a, a lot of space in my inventory system. And I, again, I think it'll sell pretty quickly. So turning $3.97 into 18 or so plus shipping, easy item to list, easy item to ship and and store while it waits to be sold, uh, I think that's a winner. Next item up is this adult baseball catcher's mitt. I'm not sure what brand it is. That's the logo right there. I do not recognize that at all. And on the inside right here, it says Champro. I need to do some more research and see if I can determine exactly what you know model and, and company this is from. But generally, anytime you can find an adult size catcher's mitt, it's going to be worth at least 20 to 25 bucks at minimum, as long as it's in good condition. And this one is in great condition. Uh, well, I'd say good condition. It probably needs a little bit of leather conditioner put on it to soften up and up a bit. But this is uh, this was three dollars and 97 cents. And again, I think I should pretty easily get 20 to 25 bucks for it, if not more. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for catcher's mitts. Next item up is this Sony Walkman. This is the Sony model DEJ611 portable CD player. It's a little scratched up on the surface, but it was only $1.97. I did check the battery compartment back here and there's no corrosion or anything like that. Generally with used vintage electronics, I'm not 100% sure if this is vintage or not, but with used electronics, if you're thinking about buying them, I would always recommend to check the battery compartment to make sure that no one left the batteries in there because if you do that over time the battery acid is going to leak out of those and cause a lot of corrosion on the, the the battery terminals inside and you can clean it off sometimes but sometimes you can't it, I've seen it a lot with remote controls and those like um, like tape tape recorders like handheld tape recorders a lot of people leave batteries and stuff like that and put it in a drawer for 10 or 15 years and then donate it to Goodwill and then you're left with 
an item that either doesn't work or you have to put a lot of work into cleaning it. So always check the battery compartments and let's go ahead and test this out. I've got a couple fresh batteries right here. I'm gonna put it in here. Uh, there's already a CD in here. It came with a free, <laughs> free CD, which is Outcast speaker box. Pretty good, pretty good band. Uh, so we'll put some batteries in here and I'll plug it up to my aux cord right here and see if we can get it to work. It's got the, it's got a thing coming up on the screen. Oh wait, the volume button. I forgot there's a volume button on here. It works. So I can't play much of that song because I'll get a copyright strike on the YouTube video, but it does work. Super happy about that. Soul comps on this model. Again, it was DEJ611 in good working pre-owned condition. These are selling for about $20 free shipping. Uh, it depends on if it has headphones with it. A lot, nobody really has the original headphones that came with it that I'm seeing on eBay. A couple of people are throwing in some cheap headphones and they're selling theirs for like 25 free shipping. I'll probably just sell as is. Again, it was $1.97. Sell it for $19 free shipping. Probably cost four or five bucks to ship out. Pretty good profit margins and this should sell pretty quickly. Next item up is a pair of shoes. And if you've followed my videos for any amount of time, you know that I love selling used shoes on eBay. They're an item that is very plentiful in my area where I live and I usually sell them for a pretty good profit margin. Most of my thrift stores around here charge between five and seven seven dollars for a pair of shoes, which at that price point, it's pretty easy to make a profit on them. This pair of shoes, however, it was in the boutique section at this particular Goodwill, which is where they only put out one of the shoes and they're usually marked up a little bit higher than the normal shoes so if you want to buy that one you have to take that single shoe up to the catch register and then they take it to the back and find the, the pair I guess they don't want people stealing the nice shoes it's so funny because a lot of times the ones they do the boutique section on are like some of the most worthless sh shoes I've ever seen at a thrift store but this pair is actually pretty good I think this is a pair of Nike Air Force Ones um, Nike Air Force Ones like in a burgundy I guess a burgundy and white colorway very good condition like a leather like a leather i don't think it's suede i think they're both leather just one's like a shinier leather up top and this is like a softer leather on the side a little bit of yellowing on the soles but i'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be or not but the bottoms are super clean these were eleven dollars and 97 cents i don't know if you guys can I think it's eleven dollars and ninety-seven cents, which even for a boutique section shoe is still pretty affordable. These are a size nine, I believe, in men's. I'm I'm ninety-nine percent sure these are men's. I need to look up the exact model number to be sure. But overall, these are in great condition. I probably won't even have to do any cleaning to these. I do a lot of cleaning to my used shoes, but these look like they are ready to rumble. Again, a little bit of yellowing, but it's pretty consistent. So maybe it's just supposed to be like that. It's not like splotchy yellow. It's just a like this is slightly yellow compared to the the nike check i don't even know if you can see that in the video but overall uh, this is a very clean pair of shoes and i think there's plenty of profit to be made at eleven dollars and 97 cents by cost i'll probably list these for i don't know 40 to 50 bucks free shipping uh, maybe i haven't looked up sold comps maybe they're worth a lot more than that but i think i can easily get 40 to 50 bucks for these which will give me a, a pretty pretty good profit at an 11 11 97 by cost the next item I am super excited about is something that's always been on my radar when I go to a thrift store or a yard sale. I'm always looking out for it. I found a couple of them in the past, but they've always been broken, so I haven't bought any. This this one does work, I think. The radio portion, I couldn't get that to work, but the clock portion works. And this is an old General Electric flip, flip clock thing. It's like when the time changes, it's got the little flaps in there that, that change on this. I tested it, it, it works, except the radio, like, it's just static. I don't know if it's missing an antenna or what, but this was only $4.97. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much it will, it'll, it'll sell for this. Again, this is the General Electric model C4305A walnut grain finish on polystyrene. I'll throw some soul cops on the screen here just so you can get a good idea of what it might sell for. Again, I'm not sure if the radio doesn't work or it's just missing an antenna, but either way, the clock works and it's super excited for me to find something like this. It's something that I've been looking for for a while. It may only sell for 20 to 25 bucks. I don't even know, but it's just such a cool item. They just don't make stuff like this anymore and to be able to find it in working condition at a thrift store for less than five bucks is just a killer deal. This next item I am super excited about. Again, it's something that's always been in the back of my mind to look out for. I found a couple of them at an antique store before, but they were priced basically full retail, not enough margin to bother with buying them. And I finally found one at a thrift store and it's in pretty good condition. Check it out. 
It's a Frosty the Snowman Christmas blow mold. I don't know why they call them blow molds, but basically these are like vintage plastic yard decorations, like Christmas yard decorations. He's got a little bit of paint, you know, wearing on his nose. He's been rubbing his nose on something. He's got a little bit of, you know, paint wearing on his gloves. But for something this old, I think it's in pretty good condition. Now the power cord is kind of down there in his back. It like got pulled in. So I'm gonna see if I can get that out. And Oh, I think the light bulb in there is broken. There we go. Is it broken? I can't really tell if it's broken or not. Let's plug it in and see. Open up. Oh yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely broken. Okay, so we gotta change the light bulb and then I'll plug it in and see if we can get it to work. Ha! Found it! Okay, so we screw it back in here. Let's plug it in and see if it works. Uh-oh. I don't think the light works. I'm 100% sure that this light bulb should work because I just took it out of the light in the kitchen and it was working when I unscrewed it. So obviously something is wrong with the cord here. There's a little bit of tape over it right here so I think maybe it's frayed or something. So uh, I'm not gonna try to fix it. We can just get a replacement for this or just sell the blow mold as is. I'm sure somebody will buy it. Old Frosty here was only $6.97 which is a great price for a Christmas blow mold. Depending on the character and the condition and the age and if it's like a missing piece of a certain rare set, I've seen individual blow molds like this go for as high as four to six hundred dollars at on auction on eBay. So I'm gonna look up this right now and see if we can get a pretty good idea of what, you, what it should sell for. That was pretty quick. I went to the eBay app on my phone. I typed in Frosty the Snowman Christmas blow mold. I searched through the results and filtered to show only listings that had actually sold recently. And the very second one on the list is my exact same Frosty. He's got the same color scarf and everything like that. And that one sold for $91 on auction plus $50 shipping. So basically 140 bucks free shipping. So I'm thinking that if I put this on Facebook Marketplace for $80 or so, which would basically net me the same as it would selling it on eBay, that would be a pretty good way to get rid of it. I wouldn't have to deal with shipping it and I'd make a pretty good profit margin. I will say that the one that sold on eBay for $91 was in slightly better condition. His nose was all the way red, his glove was all the way red. So I don't know if I bothered trying to paint this and fix it. I might just sell it as is because yard decorations are gonna get kind of beat up over time anyway. And for something this old to be in this kind of condition is kind of expected. And the final item that I picked up today, which is gonna be kind of weird when you see it, but trust me, it's much more interesting than it looks. It's this box of pool noodles. And if you don't know, I use pool noodles to help packing and shipping fragile items. Like if I send a, a picture frame or a VCR or something, I can cut the pool noodles and kind of tape them around the, the edges and corners of something that's fragile and it just helps pack it a little bit more, more tightly. And these are kind of hard to find if you're not shopping in spring and summer. So anytime I find these and they're a dollar or less, I buy them. This was at Goodwill. The box looked just like this. They were a dollar each, so there's four inside. And while I was looking inside, I looked down at the bottom of the box. Let's just take all these out so I can show you. I looked down at the bottom of the box and I saw something peculiar down there. Can you guys see what those are? Those are Pokemon cards. So let me explain what was going through my head at this moment. Obviously I wanted to buy the Pokemon cards, but because they were in the bottom of this random box, they obviously weren't priced yet. So depending on which cashier you get when you go up to the front, some cashiers will just sell it to you for a dollar or two dollars, whatever, but some, if they want to really follow the rules, they're going to take all the cards and they'll say they have to put them back and let the pricers reprice them and they'll be put out later this week. And obviously I don't want to do that. So I just took the whole box with all four noodles up there to the cash register. I'm like, hey, if I buy all four of these noodles, can I have the whole box like included? And she's like, yeah, that's fine. I didn't tell her there were Pokemon cards in there, but I also didn't try to hide it. I actually left the box up there with her because uh, this was the first thing I found at the store. So I was like, I'll leave it up here and I'll just go around and shop a little bit more. So she had it up there the whole time. She could have looked in it. It's not my fault, and maybe I'm a terrible person. I don't know. Drop a comment on this video and let me know if I'm a terrible person for kind of, sort of stealing these Pokemon cards. But I round up my change every time I go to Goodwill, and I've done that for like two years now, so I've probably donated hundreds and hundreds of dollars to Goodwill. So this is just me getting a little bit back for that. There's also a free yardstick inside, which they also threw in, so I guess I stole that too. Chances are these Pokemon cards are not going to be worth anything, but Pokemon cards are super hot right now, so I, I'm not just going to leave these at the thrift store. I'm definitely going to buy them, you know. So let's uh, let's dump them out gently, just in case there's some valuable ones in here, and see what we got. Ooh, a lot of energies. Okay, there's definitely, there's definitely some more. Oh no, they'll fill at the bottom. 
Ugh. Golly, what are all the yellow energies? Oh, gosh, they're falling everywhere. <sighs> okay, let me let me pick all these up without stepping on anything. Guys, there's literally probably like over a hundred Pokemon cards here. There's so many. Okay, let's pick them up gently. So at first glance, I don't think these are like original, like 1997 or whatever it was. Most of them say 2007 or 2009 from what I've seen. I haven't really looked at all of them yet. This is all of them. All those Pokemon cards were in the bottom of that box. Oh my gosh. There's some dog hair in there. Sorry, I was picking them off the floor. Um, guys, obviously I can't go over all these cards in this video. That would take way too long. So I'll probably do like a live stream tomorrow, like the day after I post this video. I'll do a live stream on my YouTube channel going through all these cards, but just to show you a couple of them, let's just go through these. So we got, that's a reverse holographic, right? Reverse holo. I mean, these aren't like new Pokemon cards, but they're not old Pokemon cards either, you know? That's a 2007 holographic Raichu. That's, that one's pretty cool. Even if it's not worth money, that's still pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to get a little overwhelmed because I'm super excited. Pokemon cards are super hot right now. They're pretty much at their all time most valuable they've ever been. They probably will never be more valuable than they are right now. So this could be money. There, there could be profit here. I honestly do not know. So I'll do my live stream tomorrow, the day after this video post. We'll go through all the cards. Hopefully there'll be some Pokemon experts in the chat. I'd greatly appreciate you guys' help. Uh, and maybe I'll give away some cards or something. I, I don't know. I feel like it'd be a pretty good, pretty good content for a live stream. So we'll do all that. But to have all all these pokemon cards in the bottom of a box of pool noodles is pretty insane and that wraps up my thrift haul from today all that stuff i showed you all the, everything i showed you in today's video came from one goodwill and that's how it happens sometimes guys you, you go into one or two or three goodwills you don't find anything and you go into one goodwill and you find all this stuff in, in one fell swoop i spent a total of 46 dollars and 54 cents on everything in this video and uh, I feel like probably just those Nike Air, Air Force Ones will probably make most of that money back, probably. Uh, and then everything else will be pure profit. So that was definitely a good day uh, in the thrift store for sure. Before I let you guys go today, I do want to jump in here and mention that I am starting a reselling and YouTube-based podcast with my friends Drew and Joey. You know them as Drew underscore thrifts and flips on Instagram and Profit Monsters on YouTube and Joey as Joey Bada Bing 22 on Instagram and YouTube. The podcast is going to be all about reselling and YouTube. We're all resellers. We all have YouTube channels and I feel like each of us brings kind of something different to the party. So if you're interested in listening to our first episode of the podcast, I'll have it linked in the description of this video. We have a YouTube channel for the podcast. The podcast will also be available on all your podcast platforms, Spotify and, and iTunes and all that stuff. We're doing everything through Anchor Podcasting, so it should push it out there to pretty much any platform. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it at all, remember to hit the thumbs up button for me down below. It really helps me and the channel out a ton. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to this channel for more content just like this. Thank you guys for watching. You're the best, and we'll catch you on the next one. Wow.